Opening scene, we see Daniel being shot by a mysterious character. But how did this actually happen? Let's go back a couple weeks and see how things unfolded, shall we? We see Nancy, an aspiring writer, writing a blog about how to kill her husband. She writes about how mayhem and chaos come easily to her. And she writes these weird romantic tragedy novels. And if you're not really familiar with romantic tragedies, there's usually someone getting killed or dying. And Nancy also talks about the fact that even though you can write about murder and mayhem, doing it is a completely different story. And later we see that Nancy's not really that good of a writer. Her book club seems to think that she's improving, but she knows that they don't really like her novel. It sounds very unrealistic, and the book publishing company that she applies for also sends her a letter telling her that her plotting is not really that accurate and there's just a huge gap. She tells this to her husband Daniel, who is a chef, and we see that Daniel is very supportive of her work. He encourages her as much as possible. And not only is Nancy a bad writer, she's also facing a little bit of a financial issue at home. Even though Daniel works a lot, they don't really have enough to be called well off. Matter of fact, they could barely get the faucet fixed. And on top of all of this, Nancy is a bit of an adventurer. She looks up trips to Portugal and she just wants to travel even though she has no money. And a day or two later, things get a little hard for her and she goes to where Daniel works and starts complaining about how they don't have any money. And seeing that they were having a bit of a quarrel in public, Daniel's parents give their van to Nancy, telling her that they now have another car to do their job with and they don't really need the van anymore. And since her car broke down just as she was complaining about money, they didn't really want things escalating. And even though Nancy has a new car now, she still has a mortgage to pay. And so many other bills, they just kept piling up everywhere. So a couple days later, she goes to see Joe. Joe is her insurance guy. He gives her a bunch of insurance advice and he also offers her a job that Nancy declines. She can't really afford to say no to a job, but she's too spoiled to say yes to a cubicle job. She even prays about it. Please God, don't let me spend my life in a cubicle. She really does that, I'm not kidding. And her very nice husband Daniel gets another job working the night shift because he really doesn't want to see his wife being upset over money. He also gives her an idea to do what she loves. He tells her that she can actually teach people to write. Daniel really believes that his wife is a good writer. Maybe he's just too in love with her and can't see that she's not really talented, but she actually goes through with it and she starts putting out ads. And since it's gonna take a little bit of time for students to actually apply and to get the whole thing going, she goes to see her very sick brother. And she doesn't go to see him to actually ask how his chemotherapy is doing or if he fell off the wagon again because he's also an addict. No, she goes there just to ask for money. And apparently Nancy has been abusing her relationship with her brother and using him like an ATM because she overhears him and his wife talking about that. And so she ends up not asking for money from her brother and she's still very broke. And even though she's still broke, she goes on this trip to Vegas with her book club. And there she gets a little embarrassed because all her credit cards got declined because she maxed them out a long time ago. And somebody she doesn't really like in the book club had to help out and that was even more embarrassing. And seeing that none of her business ideas are really taking off, Nancy takes that cubicle job that Joe offered her. And the insurance job wasn't really easy on Nancy. She already hated it in the first place and she had to go door to door sometimes and that took its toll because Nancy was a very prideful person. And she took out all her frustration on her husband Daniel, who was supportive about everything. And she started to resent him because he was supposed to be the breadwinner. And they have a big fight and after the fight, Nancy just decides maybe I shouldn't be looking at these companies and I should just self-publish my book if I believe in my work and she does that and she asks everybody she knows to leave a good review so that other people read it and she starts to feel a little good about what she just did but a couple weeks later the woman that she really hates in her book club actually gets a book deal and Nancy is mad as hell about that and the more mad and frustrated she got weirdly enough her need to travel and drink rosé on a beach in Portugal just kept getting Getting worse, she just wanted to escape her life. She even talks to her husband Daniel about selling this house and just moving somewhere. And he agrees with her. But he tells her that they need to move close by and they could actually afford to buy one of those tiny houses. And this was so insulting to Nancy's sensibilities. She deserved more than just a tiny house. 
and she goes off on Daniel again. And that very same night, things get very worse for Nancy. As she was reading her book reviews written by people who actually read it, they all talked about how bad it was and how this person just can't really get the plot right. And this aggravates her to a point where she actually comes up with the idea to kill her husband. And not just kill him, she also wants to profit off his death. And this idea manifested itself in the shape of an insurance claim. Nancy comes up with this idea to actually issue all these insurances. And the insurance would be for Daniel. If Daniel dies at his place of employment somehow, she would get a lot of money. She hesitates a bit at first, but she actually files the insurance claim and she starts collecting her papers to be signed by Daniel. And without him actually reading or noticing what's going on, she makes him sign over a bunch of insurance claims. And then she buys a 9mm handgun. And she also figures out a way to change the barrel just in case the police investigate it. And they look through her gun just to see if she fired it or not. After she figures everything out, she starts to implement her plan. First she practices shooting, and then she scopes out her husband's workplace to see if there are any security cameras or people at that hour who would be walking around, maybe notice her. She tries to check for everything. And while all of this was going on, Nancy actually manages to track down somebody that works for a book publishing company, and she begs her to take her manuscript and look it over. And for the next week, Nancy gets so obsessed that she calls the company over and over again just to check if the lady checked her manuscript. And finally, the lady calls her back, tells her that she can't really scream at her assistant, and also that her book sucks. She has a huge issue with plotting. And this sets her off. She gets really pissed, and she actually gets the motivation to go through with her original plan to kill her husband. Because she was still kind of iffy with doing it, and now she's just angry enough to actually pull it off. So one day as her husband leaves pretty early for work, she guns him down. I gotta say guys, this was a really like horrific scene because he was so nice. Ugh, how could she do this? And this is based on a true story by the way. And so, after she killed her husband, she disposes of the gun's barrel and changes it with the new one. She goes home and pretends that she doesn't know anything. And then she gets a call and goes to where her husband works. And then she just pretends to find out for the first time. The police interrogate her, she tells them her cover story, and she even tells them that she has a gun. And when they come to collect this gun, to see if it's been used, the police officer that came to get it gets asked to take a few pictures of Nancy's car. Cause they now have security footage of her van leaving her husband's whereabouts just after the murder. And Nancy doesn't know all this and she thinks her plan went off without a hitch. The insurance companies deny most of her money cause her husband just died as soon as she filed for insurance and the police haven't really ruled Nancy out of the equation yet. She could still be a suspect. And insurance isn't really that easy and people just don't give it out everywhere. And in the middle of the investigation, Nancy's brother dies and she goes to Texas for the funeral. And there she submits some kind of fake will that her brother wrote to her. Yeah, this lady's gonna do everything she can to get that paper, guys. And she was so psychopathic and didn't even care about her brother that when the company that cremated him called her, she just ignored them because she doesn't care. And after she came back from Texas, as she was in her home with her book club, she gets a visit from the cops that charge her for murder. Apparently, Nancy is such a bad writer that that somehow manifested itself in her murder plan. She did some things that she shouldn't really do, like buy the second gun barrel on her own eBay account, which she deleted but doesn't really get removed from the cloud. And she also wrote a blog titled How to Murder Your Husband. And she detailed it quite well that the police now have enough evidence. So yeah, the movie ends with Nancy going to jail and getting charged with second degree murder. Pretty grim, but I guess it happens. Anyways, please leave a comment if you like this recap and like our video. I will see you guys on the next recap. I love you guys so much. Bye.